Let's bring up the the biggest controversy because we talked about it on the experience Friday, but we didn't give it the attention it deserved because it started getting attention when it when it became a a, a me a meme a meme on the internet one of those memes. When we reviewed the uh, All Elite Wrestling show from last Wednesday night and that fucking putrid four finger stinker of an abortion of an angle at the end of the show with the dork order and the creepers and the, and the crappers, but it's now going to be, instead of the dark order and the creepers, it's going to be the dork order and the crappers. Cause they took a giant crap in the ring. And I mentioned, cause the whole thing fell flat and they beat up all the people that are purported to be and alleged to be their top baby faces and the greatest wrestlers and tag teams in the world and et cetera with the, the fat guy in a mask and a fucking, you know, a bunch of clown show fucking goofs running around. And I mentioned in passing, I said there was one guy who was on top of one of the baby faces. Turned out it was Dustin Rhodes. It was fucking, he was punching him and he wasn't even fucking hitting him. But I didn't give it the attention it deserved because I had seen that live and it caught my eye for a second. But it, as everybody now has gone back and it, more people have analyzed this part of uh, all elite wrestling television than the Zapruder film, I think at this point. And I, we don't even know yet who's on the grassy knoll. People are taking credit for it. More on that in a minute, but they had a, when it played live, at least as I, as I saw it, I was writing and making notes, right? So I was glancing up, but I saw the wide shot where there's all these goofs in the ring and they're all dressed in the same kind of shit, but they're beating up the baby faces and I saw the one guy down in the in, and just for a second, I said, well, he's not even hitting him, but I didn't think that much of it because there's so much other shit going on. But apparently they also got a floor camera shot when it went back and looked at it. And then also one guy made a, a close up shot of, of it, you know, kind of zoomed in so that you could actually see. And the guy was punching straight past Dustin straight past like six inches or a foot past him down to the mat. And, and Dustin, <clears throat> some people were saying, well, why was Dustin selling it? When you're, when you're in a fight, a, 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 when you're in a worked fight like that and you go down and you're on the bottom, you do legitimately cover up and try to duck your head because you trust that the guy above you is going to be doing something that looks halfway legitimate and when you feel motion and everything you're trying to go with it and sell it so it's i've been in that position everybody else has in, that's been in the ring in something like that it's not dustin's fault for selling what he thought somebody was doing right but this fucking guy wasn't even trying either that or this was it, is it possible that they just let a bunch of instead of putting you know local guys who were trained or you know, independent wrestlers or, you know, extras that they brought in. Is it possible they just found some fucking merchandise help and some people like that and say, here, put this outfit on? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know what the, the, I mean, even stars from around the world of wrestling, even the blue meanie was like, fuck you guys, right? They were tweeting, this guy needs to be fucking fired. Fire this fucking guy now. I don't think he works there. Everyone. Uh, you know. Everyone on Twitter, I mean, I saw Trish Stratus, Mark Henry. We got a question here about Randy Orton, who just went off on it. But everyone in wrestling, even Dustin, I think I saw, tweet about it. I mean, just... Yeah, well, because this is the most unprofessional thing I've ever seen. Whoever this guy was, either they let somebody in the ring on national television to do physical shit that had never done physical shit before, or this guy was assing off going into business for himself being a fucking clown... Because nobody would have told him to do that, and nobody who could do any better would do that on purpose, unless they were doing it on purpose. Yeah. It, anyway, so this whole thing fucking blew up and became and and there even there there was some a Danny Cage of the Monster Factory. He's a good friend of Rip Rogers's. Uh, but he had tw has shot down some outlaw guy somewhere. Actually, got on Twitter and claimed that well, it was me. It was me and I was just trying to fucking take care of Dustin because I thought he might be hurt or something like that, trying to get attention on himself, and I can't remember what the fucking guy's name was now. I, I, I want to say uh, Cannon, Freddie Boom Boom Cannon. That was a, the, we, had, we had the hit in 1962 with Palisades Park. But somebody named Cannon, right? 
<laughs> and Danny Cage comes out on Twitter and says, no, I checked. You weren't even there, motherfucker. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> He wasn't even in the fucking town, right? So people are now taking um, credit for this. Whole yes, it's, it's like you got. Yes, it's because they think, well, I'll be the biggest star in wrestling. All of a sudden, nobody's heard of me before, or whatever the fuck. I don't know, but yeah, and but the 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 fallout also has been that the young bucks have quit Twitter because, because apparently, I don't know who could have been prescient enough. Who could have been intelligent enough and 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 forethinking enough to to prognosticate that these two clowns couldn't fucking handle the big time? Uh, but uh, basically, because apparently, since they take credit for the tag team division, right? And oh boy, the S Super Smash Brothers, we just need to get them a good gimmick <laughs> or whatever the fuck. And, and now, and this angle. They got such fucking heat on Twitter that they uh, they uh, took their fucking Twitter accounts down. And, but but now Papa Buck, their father, did did reveal in a statement on his Twitter that his sons, I, this is a quote, are okay, unquote. <laughs> like like they've been a goddamn plane crash in the Guatemalan jungle and they've just fished them out of the fucking Congo river at the fucking foot of the thing in some crocodile's fucking jaw. Right. And oh, they're okay. They're okay. They just needed a break from the toxicity. And uh, cause uh, wait, I wish I knew what it was like. People have say horrible things about me on Twitter. I don't know if I could handle it. Oh my God. Uh, but anyway, so we got the young bucks off of Twitter because they were all there to take the love, right? But when the fucking people start jumping on them for shit that they did, or in my case, for many times for shit that I don't do, um, do we just say fuck you and, and block you or fuck you and don't block you so that I can continue to say fuck you? Or do they just take their ball and go home? Anyway. To quote the great president, Harry S. Truman, if you can't stand the heat... Get out of the kitchen. And in this case, they uh, they closed the kitchen down, apparently. Unless it's some well, kind of angle for their little internet show. I mean, you never really know. Well, how about this? This could be, a, to paraphrase, the great Harry S. Truman of Missouri. If you can't shoot anything other than blanks, don't call your show dynamite. Because these the punches the the meme of the punches of the still mysterious and I mean this guy's name sooner or later every great masked wrestler in the world gets found out and we found out after a while that Mil Moscris was Aaron Rodriguez and we found out after a while that the Destroyer was Dick Byer we found out after a while that Mister Wrestling Two was Johnny Walker but will anybody ever? Except the people, the the mud show fucks that want to make themselves as stars by trying to insinuate that they were this guy. Will we ever find out who this guy was? You know, I haven't watched their uh, We're the Elite or whatever the stupid internet show they have is. But I've always heard that they've taken pot shots at people. They've goofed on people. They've obviously goofed on the WWE. It is interesting that as soon as the tide turned a little bit, as soon as the AEW fans started complaining about this tag team division and this awful angle to end the last show they have of 2019 that these guys just tucked their tail between their legs and ran. Well, it, 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 here's the whole thing. I, I take no pride in being right all the time. It's just something that keeps happening to me. But I knew, and as I said from the start, my first communication, and I found out who that this guy wanted to be in business with, and everything that they were saying from the start, the level of overconfidence was staggering. This cannot possibly go wrong or go bad or not succeed because a lot of money and boy, people fucking think we're great. And so we're just going to fucking beat a guy that's been in this business for fucking 50 years and, and has billions of dollars and every major star in the world under contract. Um, that level of overconfidence is basically like you standing in front of somebody that you're having a fucking fight with, with your legs spread squared off so he can kick you right in the balls. And this, we're going to go change the world from these two middle school looking simpering fucks was staggering. 
and they're going to find out you don't change the world. You don't go to the moon until you know how to build a rocket. And the first rocket you ever build doesn't make it to the fucking moon, motherfucker. So these, the, the, the dork order and the crappers and the meme of the missing punches have become a metaphor for all elite wrestling's television program. They are missing the mark or in this case, missing the marks. They're missing half the marks they had watching the show at the start. And NXT is now beating them as we predicted because they have access to every wrestler that fucking a mainstream star in the world and put on the more professional program. And the guys who tore down the houses in all these rec centers and VFW halls and in Japan where apparently they have strange fetishes of their own involving blow up sex dolls, small school children and things with tentacles. Doesn't mean you can do it on national TV in the United States of America, especially when you tell everybody from the start that you're ass off to begin with. And you're not serious about any of this, whether it's jazz, handsy, finger pointing, prissy, prancing, fancy dancing, fucking running and simpering or whether it's fucking super kicking everything inside, including the fucking backstage production assistants, or whether it's bench pressing 16 pounds in a fucking promo, or whether it's just assing off in general, or whether it's the fucking boss who's already opened himself up to enough criticism, whether they called for it or not, giving someone a fucking stunner in front of people, did you see his tweet about that? Oh, well, I had no choice. I had no choice. <laughs> and, and, you know, but at the same time, he really had no choice because, you know, he they put him in a position on purpose to make him look bad to get over with him. They Oh, we're going to give Tony the chance to do a stunner because everybody can participate and we all want to live our dream. And also he's the boss and he's paying us. And then he takes the heat for it. They buried him. If he hadn't done it, he would have been buried, but they shouldn't have had him in a fuck in that position anyway. They were feeding the fucking money mark his fucking dream. And he had to take it and he got buried for it. And it shouldn't have been done on that fucking show, whether it was on television or off. Especially they don't understand and realize. They are finally starting to realize by the feedback they're getting that most wrestling fans, much less most people in general that are watching a national television cable network, don't want to see this outlaw goofy shit in wrestling or anything else. And that's what I said was going to flop from the start. And that's what was going to doom them. And that's what's happening because that's all that they're good at is this goofy outlaw shit. And that has a limited shelf life. I don't think Gigi Allen would have been hosting a goddamn network television special on NBC at Christmas time in the fucking late 90s or mid 90s or whatever it was right before he fucking died. It was a niche product. There have been a lot of indie bands that get a good following and then go to a major label and it doesn't work out well. I'm curious your thoughts on something, because, you know, the Bucks are booking the tag team division. Apparently, it's their decision to go all the way with the Dark Order, because they're friends, they're longtime friends. And obviously, from Brandon Cutler to Excalibur, if you're friends with the Bucks, you're hooked up. So, some people say, and I'd be one of them, that the Bucks don't know how to book a tag team division. They don't know what they're doing. And others will say, well, it's because they're so unselfish. <laughs> that it's not that they're not good at booking, it's just that they're point of view right now is they're so unselfish because they're trying to use themselves to get everyone else over, which I would say falls under my category of they're not good at this. But what are your thoughts on the fact that some people are saying that the Bucks, it's not that they don't, they don't know what they're doing running their tag team division. It's just that they're so unselfish that they're trying <sighs> to help everyone else. We examined this when they had the match with Private Party, and they put them over one, two, three, and did it in such a way that we said, was it either accidental because they're just that stupid and they don't know what they're doing, or did they bury these guys like a Hulk Hogan put over job? Because the way that they structured the finish, 
private party gave one of the bucks that outstanding finish the fucking hurricane run into the rko in the middle of the ring boom but then that wasn't the legal guy so that buck rolled out on the floor and then they did their fucking 360 or not 360 but the goddamn big flip whatever the fuck it is that queen does quinn does off the top rope the big splash and boom on the other buck and one and got a two count and then both those bucks after those two moves were strong enough to where the one buck reversed one of Quinn's fucking moves and had him up for the tombstone. And the other buck was going to give them their fucking Meltzer driver finish when just a pull of the leg from the, the other uh, Kennedy and a roll up boom, one, two, three and private party wins on a fluke out of nowhere. Either one of those previous finishes would have got private party over convincingly in front of that crowd and you could tell by the goddamn reaction uh to the false finishes but they had to go one step further and make sure it was a fluke and that they were okay after their big moves so i questioned whether it was either they're just that stupid they didn't realize that or they were hulk hogan like in that they knew exactly what they were doing and we got people weighing in on both sides but it's either it's not that they're being unselfish it, it, it's it's either that they just don't know what they're doing or as we posited the theory this past week on the experience that they just think that they're they are both them and omega are so delusional that they think they are such big stars to the mainstream audience instead of their niche following that they feel like if they fucking do a job for any of these people well, it'll suddenly just make them stars. So in, in that case, maybe they're being unselfish because they're such huge stars that they can just anoint these people by putting them over. But if that's the case, then they're being unselfish at the same time as they're being completely fucking stupid and delusional about their standing in the community. And they ain't that fucking over to where they can go on national TV to, uh, and, and we mentioned also, they're down to the audience now that knows who the fuck they are. The the half of the 50% of the audience that they've lost since the debut were the people who didn't know who the fuck they were but was going to watch this new wrestling program. Um, and now they're they're probably down to the people that know who the fuck they are. But if they want to get any new people, new people to join the party then they have to be a fucking star to someone more than who they are right now. And they're not, and this is not the way to get over as stars. So this whole thing is a conundrum wrapped in an enigma surrounded by a, uh, Gordian knot of puzzlement. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see if we find out who that masked man was. Thank you. Masked man as Lenny Bruce. May have said <laughs> the, mo the most sought after identity. People are going to have private detectives on the trail of this guy. Um, I wonder if he just rolled out of the fucking ring and just ran out the back door without changing that night. Could they have ended 2019 their last show? Cause again, they have no show this week because of Christmas. Could they have ended with a worse show to go on a two week break? Well, no. And I don't, I don't know once again why the last why wasn't the last thing you saw Jericho and Jungle Boy if they wanted to make a star? Why in the world was that not the television main event? Instead, I know they wanted to go to kick ass top of the nine o'clock Eastern hour and go through that, but it <laughs> the whole gimmick of the Dork Order is insane to begin with to think that you would put this much time and effort into it because if people were doing it right, it would still look stupid. The fat guy would still be fucking fat and horrible to look at, offensive to the eyes. The fucking creepers would still be acting stupid and, and look appalling to most normal viewers. Uh, nothing about this, if, if people, if they were doing it right, they would still be the shits, right? But they they did it wrong, and they really and it sucked really badly, and it was flat. And the audience was standing there in the arena, going, "What the fuck is going on here?" 
And I don't know who could have envisioned that it would be good. Uh, but but no, if they want to, if if they want to make a star, give Jungle Boy to Jericho again. Maybe do a two or three week little fucking program on television, and then finally get some fucking heat on Jungle Boy and and sympathy for whoever the fuck it is Jericho is going to work with on the next pay per view. I can't even remember at this point. God damn it. Moxley. That's it. Moxley. Is there it you Moxley? For, I think it's Moxley. Well, okay, for Moxley to come out and save Jungle Boy in the end. But you've, you, you've got a guy who knows what he's doing uh, with a kid who can get over when led. We saw that. Jericho led him by the nose every step of the way through that fucking match. But he has the appearance and physical charisma with the audience and the goodwill to get sympathy and have people behind him. And they bought some near falls. That's where you make a star. You got to have the proper material and the and the, then the proper artist to sculpt it. There was none of that in the main event that they delivered. So they can make stars and they have people there that can do it. And Cody can do the same thing. But what the fucking fuck? What in the flying fucking fuck? What in the flying French fried fucking fuck? Was that last segment? I, you know, so maybe they'll have Christmas for the fucking elves from the North Pole to bring them Eddie Graham down one of the Bucks chimneys and Bill Watts down the other one. Maybe they can slap some fucking sense into their smarmy little faces.